Hi everybody and welcome to season four, episode 16 of the Hard Truth Inside the Football Industry podcast with me, Philip Eitzen and Darren McAnthony, chairman and we need to change this majority owner of Just <laughs> Reunited. Um, happy New Year, first and foremost. Happy New Year to you too, Philip. I think it's, uh, you know, after today, I think I'm on Indian tonight and then it's back on the horse to <laughs> lose some pounds when the family yeah. got back at the end of this week. Jesus, I think 20 pounds need to come up. Yeah, it's one of the joys of Christmas and New Year, isn't it? You try and set yourself all this. You tell yourself you're going to be better this year, and then it comes around. And uh, to to be fair, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've got my resolutions on my desktop. They're the same as last year. So it's like, you know, lots of things. It's so good. You know, got so caught up with everything football wise. You know, my personal resolutions, but no, got to lose some weight. Got to get healthy. Got to knock the fags on the head. Lots of things need to happen mm -hmm. this year. So it, it, it's time. As they say so but all good you know you had a good christmas you had a good new year yeah it was um nice just to stay in one piece for a little while <laughs> in one place for a little while should i say because we've been doing so much traveling and just continuing to get the house up and running and unboxed yeah. and we're getting closer i probably built too many things over the last uh, few days but um <laughs> all progress it's really funny because you had two home games over christmas like we did and you drew both of them like we did didn't you yeah <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> Um, and there weren't great spectacles, right? In any stretch of the imagination, too. Conditions were pretty awful, especially for us. We drew it to Stockport nil nil. It was one of those games, it was blood and thunder. Um, but I mean, everyone was trying hard, but there wasn't a lot of quality out there. Well, uh, to be fair, uh, probably the opposite for us. We had two, mm -hmm. two, two draws, they were fucking great games. They were, you know, Reading were really good, Barnsley were really good. They were like. You know, they, they were they were games that like I enjoyed. I brought my family to the second one, and to be fair, I mean, I, you know, I say about best in class. You know, between Chris, Cy, Dawn, the marketing man, Clive, the the, the work that's gone in to ten thousand plus crowds mm -hmm. in the space of three days, which for us is like, yeah. I don't think I don't think that's been done over Christmas for a long time. So that made me smile. Gutted not to win after the two away wins, but you yeah. know, it, you know, it's. It's Christmas. It's tight. It's it's players are like, you know, going all out. You know, the manager against Barnsley rested a couple of the front yeah. four and mm -hmm. you know made some changes. And Barnsley came out of the fucking gates. They were like fucking, you know, it, it's really funny playing with a target man, which we did against Barnsley. I was explaining to my wife. I said, "Can you see the Barnsley back four? And she's like, "Yeah." I said, "Where are they right now?" And she goes, "They're inside your half." I said, "Right." I said, "If we're if we're playing a a, a player with pace." Mm -hmm. And that's not a slight because Clark Harris is Clark Harris. Yeah. He's brilliant and scored two goals. I said, but you would notice a complete difference of their back four. They'd be about 30 yards further back mm -hmm. because they'd shift themselves with the pace. Yeah. And, and that allowed them to over the top. Uh... They, it, just, it, it was just so uh, symbiotic of, if that's the right word, of where we've changed now as a team. Just that one game where we were penned in. We couldn't play out the way we played. Barnsley just high pressed the shit out of us because they were never worried about mm -hmm. fucking. Yeah, they could go long, ain't getting in and whatever. But fair play, we were, we were. You know, Reading was just one of them games you should have won, didn't win. But, you know, then obviously Barnsley came, probably the best they've played all season. Battered us for half an hour. Goldie got injured, um, and then just that resilience just dug in. We grinded back into the game. Clark Harris, the League One goal scoring goat, got a couple of goals. And then we should have won it really at the end. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, it's it's just, and then you've obviously got a few people moaning about draws and whatever. But, you know, at this time of the year, if you can come out of Christmas unscathed in any way, you know, from a, an injury point of view, a player healthy point of view, pick up points, still be within touching distance of where you need to be, you've had a pretty good Christmas. Yeah, I think that you, both of us have had the good runs that we've had based mm. on the same 11. You know, yeah. there's not been a lot of rotation for squads, yeah. and you're starting to see, for, at least from us, some tired legs in there, especially with the games coming yeah. thick and fast. So, yeah, I know you talked about you rotated a few out for Barnes. Like, yeah. we yeah. haven't really done that, and it's showing. You know, I think it's catching yeah. up on uh, players now. The manager, you know, I think he wanted to rotate more, but because you're playing Barnsley, you're like, you know, you, I think he rested. Ricky was rested. Hector was wrecked, rested. There was, was there someone else in there arrested? Uh, was Kwame arrested? You know, a good chunk of what we call the front four. You know, it was just, you could tell people were tired. The pitch is heavy. It's wet. It's conditions aren't great. And to be fair, they were fresh as fuck yesterday at Derby. So it was kind of like mission accomplished, you know, because it just fucking, we ran all over them. 
So, you know, and, and, and to get through, like I said to you, now you're going to get to the stage where you got FA Cup next week. Then you're back to pretty much a game every week. And, you know, and then you're going to come up in February, March against some real tired fucking legs. So we really want to save our legs because, yeah. you, you, you know, you can definitely Make roll over. The sun shines then. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, it was... Um, yeah, well, let's talk about you yesterday. So you you had a bit of a horror show yesterday. You texted me. It was a bit of a hoofball event. Yeah, we. Um, I'm already putting it out of my mind. We lost a crew one nil, and one of those where we'd be playing now, we still wouldn't score. And you know, I had because your game was on ESPN yesterday over here in the states, so I had your game on one monitor, and I was watching ours uh, on my computer. I had and, people you know, from everywhere text me and ringing me during the fucking game. It's yeah. like people don't fucking know me. <laughs> you know, all these like relatives and people are suddenly watching it in the sky. Or what? So I had a relative on his cruise ship watching. They're sending me like fucking texture. And I'm just like, do, do you know? Do you know mm. me? My, you know, for fuck's sake, like, fucking leave me alone during the game. Fucking <laughs> you know. I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, sorry, carry on about your game. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm watching yours. And in the meantime, I'm watching Hoofball, which is really all ours was. It was just hoof it long. It's not really going anywhere. It's not really sticking. It wasn't good to watch. Pretty mm -hmm. awful display. Uh, they scored with a penalty, 12, 13 minutes. And to be honest, they didn't look like scoring much thereafter either. It was one of those, you know, it would have been a boring nil-nil draw if it wasn't for them scoring a penalty. Yeah, I saw the highlights this morning when I was watching the NFL, mm -hmm. all the goals back, you know what I mean? So so what's that from? Tired legs? Just just a heavy Christmas? I think so. I mean, I hope so. I hope that, you know, we're not getting found out now, um, now that we've been playing the same way for a few weeks, getting some results and, you know, uh, Play, teams start to get wise to that. Um, Stockport took a lot out of them. You know, Stockport, a good team, heavy pitch. I said it was a battle. Yeah. So I think yeah. everyone exerted an awful lot of energy right. into that one. And it just looked like they didn't really show up. Right. Okay. Well, you've been on a good run. You got mm. yourself back within touch and distance going into the new year. So that's all that matters, right? I mean, are you, are you in the FA Cup next week or not? We're not. We've got uh, Crawley at home on Saturday. Okay, they had a good win yesterday. So, yeah. okay. well, you got to start cracking those home wins now after a couple of draws. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, we'd got within touching uh, distance of the playoffs. We've dropped back down now, just um, with the last three games over Christmas. So, quite um, open league, quite yeah. open. Like, but yeah, really is. not much points in it. I mean, we look at yeah. Tranmere uh, three or four weeks ago. You know, Tranmere were second bottom and not really Dead sure where the next point was going to come from. And now they're yeah. a couple of points off us, and they've been on a great one, a great run. Uh, I think they beat Notts County on. Uh, I watched the game. Unbelievable! Mm -hmm. Nigel's got them flowing. I mean, they're scoring goals for fun as well. So they they got it's a wide open league. It's yeah. a ridiculous league. I think anywhere from like fifth downwards is just there's there's two three for me there's three places in the playoffs up for grabs. Mm -hmm. from. And and a lot of really it's fascinating. League one, league two are a bit like that this year. There's just so many teams that are just within touching distance of. You know, putting a run together, four or five wins, and your season changes like overnight. You know, so did you watch much of our game? Um, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, the first goal went in. I'm like, okay, here we go. You know, 20 seconds in, you one nil down. I thought I was uh, a bad luck curse uh, turning yeah, on. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they, I heard about the, the, the stats about us not winning in front of a big crowd mm -hmm. for three years. The this, the that, the big game mentality. What happened last year? You know, all those, and obviously people. And I, I didn't feel like that after 20 seconds. I was like, okay. And it's kind of like being like, I, I, I said to the manager the other day, I said, the best thing that happened to us this season was when we went, we played Derby at home. We went 1-0 up. We dominated the game. They scored four goals in 15 minutes. It was like freak-like. And it was the best thing that happened to the young group because the manager told them, you, you don't do anything different. Yeah. Like You go out in the second half and win the second half and play the same way. And we actually battered them in the second half and won the second half one nil. So we lost four mm two. -hmm. And it was probably one of the most, you know, best things that could have happened to the group because it was just like, okay, if you're four one down at home, you tend to panic and change things and make loads of changes and change it's your not, Let's not get embarrassed any further. Right. But we didn't. We stood our ground. And uh, again, yesterday, you know, big test. There's 30,000 at Pride Park. It's on Sky, the cameras. Everyone's thinking, oh, Peterborough are going to go under here. Mm -hmm. You know, we've made a mistake 20 seconds. We've got a goalie making his debut, you know, yeah. in the league. Um, all those things. And then we just played some of the fucking best football. Was, yeah. I mean, I compared it when I was texting you to the hoofball that we had versus, you yeah. know, it was champagne football from you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was no surprise what you equalized, what, eight, nine minutes in. Yeah. And, um, 
it, the only surprise was that Derby was so close, not that you got a winner in the last minute. We should have won that game in the first half. You know, there was, there was a period of time, you know, I think he had to make a formation change. The Derby manager, he brought three subs on at half time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if, if you were a big club in front of a big crowd watching, you would have been a bit like, Jesus, where, where's that come from? And, you know, uh, and the Sky people, like, this is where I was talking about DFL product and needing to be better. You know, the actual in game commentators were brilliant. The two guys, I think it was Lee Henry and Gary, is it Lee? I can't remember, Weaver. Brilliant, like brilliant. They knew their stuff. They talked about it. They weren't surprised by how we played because they'd done the research. The three people in the studio, you know, you got the presenter. She's talking before the game about, oh, if Clark Harris isn't there today and he's going, you know, where are they going to get the goals from? Not realizing that he'd played one of the previous 12 games. And in that run, we became the top goal scorers in the EFL. Mm -hmm. Then you've got Ainsworth and obviously the other fella who are commentating during the game and at half time are almost in shock at what they've just seen. But if you'd watched us and done a bit of research, you wouldn't be shocked that we had 60, 70% possession or played yeah. that way because we played that way most of the season. So, and again, you're like, why are you shocked? Like, yeah, they just showed up, you sat in the seat well, and read yeah. the auto cue. Yeah, and we, you know, we as an EFL, if we ever get control of things, we have to like do better. We have to, yeah. we just have to do better. Our product has to be like presented better. You know, like, you know, Sky are Sky and they do their thing, but we have to just do better. Like, we've got to get, and no disrespect, but like, if you're not going to put hard yards in, mm -hmm. do your research and know what you're talking about, well, then you've got no right to present our product. The, the commentators in game, fantastic. But the rest of it, you know, listen, yeah, don't right. get controversial, but it's just, you know, not good enough. You know what I mean? Like, people are getting paid to do a job, do your research, no better. Um, you know, but the football was just, yeah, I mean, you know, to, to again then, equalize and then you're dominating the game and then again a stupid goal you know which is actually a free kick to us with Kwame's yeah. handball he's pushed yeah. into it and then it's yeah. like typical bullshit you know and he saves the penalty game. but the rebound comes straight back out which him. which to be fair to the manager he, he said to me that's on our players because they should know that right? finn finn yeah. is he's won us two penalty shootouts playing in the cups this year he's a very good penalty saver so they should have reacted quicker but um and then you know, it was funny because I think it was the 80-odd the minute. And, but if you look at our players when they score the equaliser, notice one thing. They're not running off celebrating to the corner. Mm -hmm. They're going to get the ball back. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you about a side? They yeah, have they belief that they can win. Correct. Yeah. Most teams are Pride Park who equalise because then they put up the graphic about Derby with all the late goals. But most teams at Pride Park who equalise late are probably running around doing, you know, shirts off and everything else. Our lads are like, score the goal. Quick high five, yeah. straight back to the center circle, yeah. and that's the mentality. And then, yeah, for Ricky to score the winner, you know, it was great because you just two homegrown players score goals. You know, again, the front four, uh, every player in that team was magnificent. There wasn't a weak link. There wasn't a even the subs that came on. There wasn't a poor performance. Mm -hmm. It was just. Then I'm thinking, it's the 94th minute. We've just scored. He should be blowing the fucking whistle. He plays another two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know, <laughs> okay. our game, yeah. our, our game against Barnsley. Right, listen to this. So we there's ten substitutions in the second half, plus three minutes up. Yeah. I don't understand how we started the season with fifteen minutes of of injury time and now we're down to two and three minutes. But nothing nothing is changing. Um our ref blew up while we had the ball on the um halfway between the corner flag, or like the goal line and the 18 yard box on the box. So we were there ready to just have one final cross in and he blew the whistle full time. Just when you're there. and you're Infuriating. Yeah. Infuriating. And we're like, we should have had penalty against Reading, penalty against uh, Barnsley. You know, you, you go figure. How does a team with the most shots in the EFL, the whole EFL, the most forward runs, the most forward progressions into the way, into the opposition box, the most possession have one penalty? in 24 mm -hmm. league games you tell me the logic behind that and you've seen the pace on our team how does that happen are we too honest like how, how does that You're too happen? fast to get caught yeah well no we've been caught but it just hasn't been given you know what mm -hmm. i mean so it's just like again you're kind of like you know we had a goal that was like on side against the one to say it was ready and it was given offside you know the little things you know i was talking about it yesterday like yeah. var and technology and technology should be cheaper to put in nowadays it's three four years ago it was i think 300 grand a year yeah. nowadays you, you know you can you can alarm your house with cameras for less than two grand mm -hmm. you know with nest cameras so i'm sure the technology is coming down in price i think the efl has to happen it should have technology it should have goal line in every league it should have var for for all sides you know and for big decisions i watched hull 
their player gets sent off last night for a ridiculous decision. It was not a sending off, and it changed the whole game. Mm-hmm. And I just think now with the money involved, that has to change. But anyway, back to Derby, magnificent. Like so happy for the fans, so happy for the players. It must have been a good feeling when Ricky scored. It was great. It was great. You know, particularly after you know Clark Harris went back in. You got your Ricky doubters. You got whatever else. And again, like fantastic for the kid. Like so happy for him. You know, so since he's gone in there as part of the front four, we've been a revelation. Um, and you know, long touch wood, long may it continue. So, you know, it was just it was just great. You know, that big club. Everyone says you can't win away. You can't do it for the crowds. And our last time we were at Derby with Darren, he was dying the next day. They beat us yeah. an injury. They beat us with an injury time winner. You know, and and again, I remember the phone call and I was in the shower. So. You know, for that to happen, I was really happy for him and the staff, you know, fair play. So uh, you got Leeds at home in the cup. Yeah, yeah. Weekend, so, mm. To uh, take your mind off the league for a game. 5-5. Five, five. Um, They're from four, I'm from four. 5-5. Five, five. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of pace, by the way. You better get your glasses on. <laughs> so nil-nil then, it is. <laughs> no chance. No chance. I'll take it because of the replay in the dough. Yeah. But, like, I don't think so. Who knows? Look, it's a freebie. Go and play your best. You know, it is what it is. Um, we got that. We got the EFL trophy last 32, I think, on the Wednesday. Yeah. I go away for a few days in business, and then it's back to the league. So, yeah, it is what it is. So, we just, the players have got a few days off now. I think the manager had them in 12 days in a row over Christmas, mm-hmm. and he's given them all a few days to relax. They're putting out, Phil's just told me that my players have been sticking a load of emojis all day on social media. Yeah, I, I, they're all watching something or, uh... yeah, I, I don't know what's because it's like, Phil's like, so something you need to tell me. I'm like, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. I don't know. So who knows? I don't know, yeah. you know. So, you, you know, maybe they've got a gift for me that I don't know about. So who, who knows? <laughs> they've organized the PK transfer, yeah, 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 deferring <laughs> all of their wages. Listen, uh, he's he's gone back, he's he's they've, they've recalled him, which is a real shame because you know, the FA Cup next week, he can't play for them, he could play for us, you know, he's missing. But I'm, I'm not going to winch because as I said it before, it's it's Rotherham's prerogative, they own the player. Yes, we did a season-long loan. They put a recall in there, but that's the way it is in football. We have to move on. You know, of course, you know, we're trying as we speak, but, you know, it's down to Rotherham, you know. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're fighting for their lives, so yeah. they, they can do that. And with loans, you got to be thankful for, for getting a player who had that impact because we've yeah. talked before about yeah. you can never be sure with a loan player that's coming yeah. in and where yeah. the mindset's going to be. And, yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. just frustrating when you, you know, always say never fall in love with a lone player, but, you know, it's easier <laughs> said than done when they perform the way that they do. Yeah, yeah, no, he's been fantastic for us. So we'll, we'll miss him. And, um, you know, if we don't get him back, we wish him the best at Rotherham and mm-hmm. uh, we wish them the best. It is what it is. So that's life. Yeah, we just recalled Jake Young from Swindon. Uh-huh. So, um, of yeah. course, the rumour mill's now out in force of who's going to go and buy him. So uh, it's going to be interesting because of, you know, him playing for us and playing for um them so if we play him um i think if we if we play him again then he can't go anywhere else this season yeah if you want if you want to cash in you don't play him because i i I see they've lost him and they've lost kemp as well back to mk don so they've lost a lot of goals a lot of goals a lot of assists and that's always the it's always why i don't like loaning forwards yeah it's a bigger impact as much as we lose yeah. PK and he's our captain. But, you, you know, those goals and assists, you're going to lose, you know, they're going to lose. Um, who do you think will buy him? So, I mean, it'll be, I don't know if we're selling him or not. We've made the noises about him playing on Saturday or okay. coming into the squad. But, you know, that could just be negotiation and building leverage um, to try and get a better deal for him. The rumor this morning was Portsmouth, but I think that was just some made up account. Okay. So we'll see. The number that they gave was the number you said. Someone, someone's been listening to the podcast about his what, value. What was the number? I think you said three hundred was uh, what you thought he was. His value is probably for uh, what he's achieved and where he right. is. So yeah, that was the number attached to the rumor this morning. So okay, okay. Someone's how yeah, long has he got left with you? He's got eighteen months. Okay, eighteen months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, somebody wants him and there's a goal scorer. I mean, is, do you think someone in League Two will have a have a sniff? I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if anyone in League Two would pay the mon- has got the money to pay or would mm. pay the money. Yeah, you know, Wrexham, Notts County aside, so I think if he goes anywhere, it's going to be League One. Okay, interesting. Oh, watch this space. Well, yeah, what we, I mean, what? Think, yeah. So carry on. We could do with the money, I think, to cover the shortfall that we'll have at the end of the season yeah. if we don't get in the playoffs. Yeah. So from a from a business decision, 
do you change things that have been working pretty well? Yeah. Um, and you know, to try and get him in, do you change the squad? Did do you change the, the formation to fit an inform player and his style of play and upset the rest of the team? It's an interesting one of what to do because we had this with Owen Doyle. You know, when Owen, Owen Doyle came back, exactly the same, scored for fun with Swindon, came back. You know, didn't really was wasn't really very happy when he came back. And uh, it didn't work out at all. And, you know, he was shipped back to them by the end of the transfer window. Okay. So watch this space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So um, let's just go around the leagues a little bit. And we'll start with um, your Liverpool boys, top of the table. Who, In fact, who would have thought Liverpool top, Aston Villa second? Going into yeah, the year. yeah. I watched the game last night. Fucking hell, I had some chances. Jesus. I know we've missed some chances this year, but... Uh, I think, you know, Liverpool have got to be up there with us for the missed chances. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, I love Darwin Nunez. I felt like, uh, you know, one minute I want to strangle him, then I want to kiss him, you know I mean? <laughs> He's just, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if he learns to finish, he could be the first 200 million quid striker you see getting mm -hmm. sold in a couple of years of Haaland, you know, still with Man City. I mean, by Jesus, he's got everything, but... Yeah, I mean, they battered Newcastle. I know some of the decisions were controversial, but that was the most one-sided Newcastle-Liverpool game I've seen for a couple yeah. of years. So, yeah, battered them. So, listen, it'll be interesting now with Salah going off. You know, they've obviously got a few injuries defensively. You know, they're playing Gomez at left back. Um, I still, as I said to you, Man City all day long. Yeah. I still yeah. think Man City will win the league by 10 points. Um, Arsenal have obviously got their own issues as well. They can't hit a you know, barn door to save their lives at the moment. Um Premier League is really interesting. It's it's going to be, it would be it would be fun if it stays interesting until March or April. Mm -hmm. But something tells me it probably won't. So let, let's see. Liverpool play Arsenal next week in the FA Cup. I said I'd be happy with a couple of cups, good top three challenge, you know, and then build on that for next year. Yeah, be competitive. Yeah, exactly right. You know what I mean? It'd be interesting. So, so what's your take on Diego Jota's um, penalty? then so i didn't see it i've read about it yeah a lot um, of people are having a go i watched it um I, I i think he was clipped i'm probably going against the grain here so i do think he was clipped i think his momentum took him over it's a penalty he's gone around it's an open goal why, why would he go down he's a goal scorer he lives and well, breathes on goals would you go down to get the keeper sent off uh, the game's over it's mm -hmm. a few minutes left in the game no i don't think I, I don't think that's why he went down i do honestly think he went down from momentum from being clipped so yeah, you know, I mean, Newcastle can complain and do whatever else, but that would have been a travesty if Liverpool had won that game last night. I mean, I know United, we had 35 shots or whatever else, but they weren't shots of any substance. I mean, their goalies made like fucking 12 saves or something last night. The XG was a record. I think the XG was like seven or eight for Liverpool. I mean, it was a battering. So, you, you know, it'd be interesting if, if Newcastle don't beat Sunderland in the FA Cup. You know, are there going to be murmurs starting there? So yeah. that that'll be interesting in the next couple of weeks. But um, yeah, it was. Um, but listen, long may I continue for Liverpool. I'm not criticising Jota. Anyone else does can go fuck themselves. So. <laughs> like you said, Arsenal losing to Fulham. And, I watched the uh, game. Yeah, really poor in the final third. Yeah, and Forest beating Man United. To be fair, after seeing Forrest and what they did to Newcastle, I was wrong about Nuno. I mean, I always thought he was a bit bland as a manager. I mean, they got four goals away at Newcastle. They, they beat United pretty comfortably. I know it was 2-1. Um, yeah, they, 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 they've obviously, their manager, well, their owner was right. I know everyone's a Steve mm -hmm. Cooper fan, but, you know, it's obviously the right thing to do. It changes yeah. as good as the rest, and it's done them the world of good. And those two wins, I think if you took those points away, they'd be in the bottom three. So those two wins were, were critical for them. So it's going to be interesting in the new year. Um, you know what happens. Yeah, Brentford are struggling right now, yeah. at least from a form perspective. I'm good at to see that. And I think there's so many mitigating circumstances. Obviously, I haven't been suspended for so mm -hmm. long. They've had injuries horrifically in a lot of areas. Um, I think you watch the games, you know, that Brentford owner will stick by their manager. Yeah. Uh, and I think they'll come out of it. I think they're the type of team that will string a few wins together, solidify and, and get back to what they were. I just think they've had a horror run. It can happen in the Premier League. It's, you know, I always say the championships are the toughest league in the world. But, you know, when you, you haven't got, when you're missing three, four, five players and two or three of them are up front, it takes away a lot of what you're doing and yeah. puts you under a lot of pressure. Um, Brentford will be fine. 
Yeah, I talk about Ivan. I had the mispleasure of seeing on Twitter this morning uh, him scoring from the halfway line against us in the FA Cup a few years ago. Great goal. But from that. So, <laughs> it, it was a moving ball, mind. Yeah, so, it never cool. happens. <laughs> Played a big part in his 10 million move. <laughs> what a player. Be interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks. Yeah, I mean, there's, um, you know, Arsenal need a striker, as you've talked about for a long time. Um, I, 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 I think Arsenal, Chelsea. Around. Fucking watching Liverpool recently, I think they can fucking do one as well. You know? <laughs> Prolific, you know. So, um, yeah, it'd be really interesting to see if there's. A, I don't think so till the summer, but it will be an interesting window to see what happens in the window. You know, the other, the other one you've got to give credit to is David Moyes at West Ham. They have an incredible yeah. Christmas. I think he's about to get a new deal. Um, they're a very strong team. You know, the Premier League's very strong. You know, like the top twelve or fourteen sides is very strong, which is great. Again, you just want to see competitive. You want to see it being competitive. Yeah, you got Fulham, who you watched beat Arsenal, and it wasn't a fluke. They were very comfortable. You're just watching the quality and somebody even these did the your Brightons of the world, you know, who are now comfortably a top seven team in the Premier League. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's brilliant because whilst you know twenty, thirty thousand, they're not fifty, sixty, seventy or giants. They're closing the gap technically, yeah. uh, and it's happening all the time. It's it's just the Premier League's becoming fascinating to watch. You know, I'm convinced that Brighton could go, with all due respect to Italy, Germany, or Spain, and be comfortably challenging for a title. Yeah, that's how strong the Premier League is getting. Which is great that a club that doesn't have the financial, well, the stature, you know, of the sixty, seventy thousand. Sure. sure. Gives, billions to spend. I mean, it yeah. gives hope to everybody, doesn't it? Of course, that, it does. of course. You know, the the pyramid is still alive and kicking, even if um, oh, it feels like it's. You know, all the money goes to the big clubs. Oh, Luton show you that. You know, Brentford's yeah. shown you after the last few years. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's strong. And by the way, um, if Leicester and Leeds and Southampton got promoted from the Championship, bet your bottom dollar they would be comfortably well up the Premier League yeah. table next year. So the Premier League is getting stronger and stronger. You know, so as a product, it's good for that. Um, but yeah, unbelievable. So what's happening in the Championship? That did my We're prediction the... about Wayne Rooney come true? Yeah, so he got the bullet this morning, didn't he? And I think we were, I mean, we we're talking about how it was deserved last mm. week, but that we didn't think they would pull the trigger because mm. it's a pretty embarrassing episode, but they did what I guess they felt they needed to do. Yeah. Um, listen, a world-class player, absolute mm. world-class. And I'll, You know, I feel about him as a manager. I just, yeah. you know, there's, there's, I could name 50, 60 better managers you know, more competent based on what they've done in a couple of years than based on what he was done to get a job like that. And that was always my thing. It drives me mad seeing names get jobs yeah. based on what, you know, you're yeah. an A, you're a name. So good luck to him. Listen, he's a wealthy young man. You know, I, I, I saw him say he's looking forward to, you know, spending time with the family and then going back to management. Mm -hmm. um, where? I was going to ask you where, where's, where? where, what would his level be? At this point, his level should have always, his level should have always been like some of the other people who've come out of top league should be in League Two, earning your, you know, your stars, mm -hmm. your your Spurs, you know, go and graft. I, I read Ryan Giggs might be taking Salford, mm -hmm. fair play to him. You know, obviously everything that happened to him, and I think he was found innocent in court. So he had a good international career. Manager taken away from him. You know, he, there was a lot of positive things about his style of management when he was managing Wales. Um, you know, his only way back in is to take Salford, which he's an owner in. And, you know, they probably need him right now. And you look at the yeah. horror, which shocks me after what they did me too. In, the, in the FA Cup. The quality of the players that they've got there, they Jeez. keep just getting Jeez. hammered. It's not even close. They're getting taken to the cleaners every week. We were seconds from getting eliminated by them in the FA Cup multiple times. I mean, I just, uh, f incredible. So, football. But, um, so I think he's going to go in there, but. I don't know where Rooney starts again. I mean, you, you, you know, I would I would spend some time learning the art of coaching and get you, you know, do what you got to do. And yeah, that's if he wants to be a manager. I just, you know, yeah. again, like I look at big names and ex players and whatever else. They're not, it's they're not all cut out for the for the role. No, but you've talked about the addiction before of you know why you want to mm -hmm. keep on even getting a fraction. You know, you're not doing it for the money, obviously. Um, you look at a Robbie Fowler who went around the world to coach around the world. Absolutely. And, and fair play to him. He's been to Australia. He's been to Japan. He went India, to Dubai, I or India. Yeah, I mean, Robbie's been everywhere because he hasn't had a crack in England. And, and he mm -hmm. must watch Rooney and people like that Lampard and get these jobs and think, what have I got to do? Like, what what have I got to do to get an opportunity? It's, it's just 
is baffling sometimes, you know, when you when you see it. So, you know, and then you've other managers as well who get six. I, was, I said to the gaffer yesterday, someone had got sacked, and I said, "Geez, he's had like seven jobs. He's never won anything." Like some of them keep getting hired. They must they must talk fucking great in a room. They got a good PowerPoint. Hey, my advice is go into sales. You know, <laughs> you know, you keep getting hired. <laughs> yeah, you keep getting fucking hired, and you're fucking useless at managing. You know, fucking get into sales. You're obviously very good at talking up yourself. So I don't know. Fascinating, really. Yeah. Shout out to Coventry. They run continued and a three-one away at Middlesbrough, which was a great result. Keep saying it to you. You know, he, he's very underrated. Him, Mark Robbins, and what he's doing at Coventry special. And they've had an horrendous start to the season. Those strikers are starting to score. I think I not dug them out, but said they needed to like hit the net more. And they've got talent all over their team. So, you know, fair play to them. I mean, to go to the Middlesbrough, they went one three one. I was watching the mm -hmm. highlights. I mean, no, they're they're a force of nature. They are Coventry. So fair play. They don't discount them from the playoffs this year from actually winning at all. Yeah. Well, I watched the first half of the Sunderland Preston game, mm. uh, which was pretty Functional, I think, for Sunderland. Mm. Preston didn't really deserve to be two 0 at half time, but yeah, um, you know, hard, as well. they got the goals and Lowy's having a hard time there. I think yeah. you know for Preston, mm -hmm. like you know, they had a good win against Leeds, obviously over Christmas, but you know they they've had a bit of a a bit of a bump in the road per se. Obviously, be interesting with Sunderland with Beal and what he's got to do there. Um, yeah. You know, again, like you can you look past Leicester, Southampton, and Leeds because obviously you know poor Ipswich. I think it's five games now without a win. They've had a bit. They've had a bit of a stutter. They're probably tired. I think you know they've been on such a run. So you're yeah, hoping. It's been on a high of momentum as well. That yeah. Perhaps, see. Yeah. You, you're hoping. That well, you know, I think they've probably ran themselves into the ground, and you know what I mean. And probably their eleven is probably very much like us. They play the same players over and over and over. And you know they'll come again. You know they'll come again. You know they've got a very good manager. They've got very good players. But obviously, they thankfully their start of the season has given them that buffer. But this is, happens to the team. They'll come again. But it's it's fascinating, really. Southampton have been beaten since the old King died. Leicester run away with it. Leeds are fucking, you know, when they hit top form, they bury teams for fun, you know, goals-wise. Um, you can't really look past those four teams I've just mentioned, can you? No, and um, at the bottom, Sheffield Wednesday now only three points um, yep. away from Huddersfield. So yep. the run that they've been on, they, they look dead and buried. They did. So they did. It's amazing a few wins, lucky late mm -hmm. wins, and you know, and then they battered Hull last night because of the ten men. Um, you know, again, a massive club, massive club. Every time I talk about a football club that's getting relegated with forty thousand fans, you're thinking, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Like what the fuck? Like that, how does that even happen? You know, the size, the the. I get a Derby County being in League One because they've been penalised not for the football mm -hmm. but for stuff off the pitch. They won't be there forever. A massive club. You know, 30,000 I'm watching in League One, and it's like, wow, our, our league is just, you know, and even in League One, just so many big, massive yeah. clubs in there, you know? Really is incredible. So, yeah, Sheffield I mean, Wednesday, it, fair play. It just shows no one deserves, no one has a right to be anywhere. No. You know, we talk about our crowds again, 17, 18 and a half. We had 19 and a half against Stockport. Um, you're, but, the bigger, you're the biggest club in League Two, mm -hmm. aren't you? You are the biggest. Yeah. It, it, there's no club, with all due respect, Forget about current record, whatever else. Brantford are the biggest club in League Two. Yeah, like that's just a fact. And and you, you know, just like I would say, um, you know, Derby are the biggest club in yeah. League One. You know, if you go by gate size and, and and history and everything else, they're the biggest. That doesn't mean you're the best team in League One. That doesn't mean you're the best team in League Two. That's down to the people who operate. Oh, Derby are one of the best teams in League One because I think they'd won eight out of nine before yesterday. So, um, yeah, just but so many big clubs. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, fascinating. What else happened in League One? So, what else happened in League One? Let's have a look down. So, Bolton found some form again. Yeah. Um, they've put together a few wins on the yep. um, the spin after uh, a little bit of a sputter, I think, before Christmas. Yeah. Far um, too good to, to not win, you know what I mean, for a while. A win for Carlisle takes them off the bottom. So, they uh, that's now the honour of Fleetwood, who have been... Uh, yeah, continuing to struggle down there. Well, they got Charlie Adam in, didn't they? They did, yeah. Again, a random one. I mean, I'm not – I say random. I don't know if he's been a coach there or whether he's – wasn't he in – that's not Liverpool. It was Jay Spearing at Liverpool. He I want to say – the under-21 team. Yes, Charlie was messaging me um, about players for – is it Stoke he was working for? I right. think he, what he's done is Charlie's kept himself around football 
and he's obviously been scouting. But I think he's always wanted to be a manager, and he probably has that personality. He's got that Scot Scottish fire in his in him. Um, it'd be really interesting to see how well he does. So good luck to him. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, again, you go about Fleetwood. You look at some of the players they've got on their team, and you look at, you know, they're not mugs. But again, they've obviously with Lee Johnson, they've just struggled. But they're not mugs. You know, it's a good team, but they're down there. Has Jack Marriott played at all this year for them? Oh yeah, I think Jack Marriott's going to. Well, I don't want to say who I heard, but rumor or there are two League One clubs buying Jack Marriott. Right. I've heard of. So yeah, he's. He, I think he wants to be closer to home. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he, he's done all right for them this season, but he's obviously playing in the struggling side. Yeah, and um, uh, Cabby is there. I try and pronounce his surname, Tishmanga. You have him on loan there, don't you? I, it hasn't come off for him. So, you know, it, which is unfortunate, but they've got him till the summer. So he needs to work hard and rebuild and, and, and yeah. start showing and doing well. And hopefully he can get himself a permanent move in the summer. Um, what else is going on in League One? So I see that um, Northampton got another win. So Incredible uh, run. Fair yeah, play to Calvin and the good. owners and their manager and whatever else. You know what I mean? Like I said to you, I want a healthy, you know, League One with teams around us that are, are our rivals because that's great for the Gates. Cambridge United, Northampton, you want them all to do well. And um, Reading, they got out of the, the drop zone. Far so too good like, for being down there. Far too yeah. good. We played them. They were one of the... Them and Barnsley were, were phenomenal. Fair play to both teams. They came and they played and, you know, and, and probably got us at the right times. As I said, it was busy, the fixtures and everything else, the, the conditions. But Reading were very good as well as Barnsley. Very good. And Portsmouth, I'm just looking for their results. I see they continue their... Uh, they had a good win their, yesterday. They had a good win. Yeah, I think good. people will call it a wobble where I think they lost and drew one, but it's not much of a wobble. They've been consistent. Stevenage. Yeah. yeah. They've been consistent all season. Their young manager's doing great. Um, you know, their fans have got a lot to be excited about. Fair play to them. You know, they they you know, good bounce back to beat Stevenage because it's never easy beating a Steve Evans team. Did you see the Nathan Thompson sending off? I did. I saw Nathan's impression of Kung Fu Panda. He, you know, yeah. it was like it was a hell of a a little bit of a high kick, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair play to him. I didn't realise he could kick that high, but uh, <laughs> you, you, you know, Nathan's an honest player. He didn't do that yeah. maliciously. He's made a mistake. He got sent off. You could see he was, you know, contrite about it right afterwards with the referee. Um, I hope the player's okay that he kicked. Him. He felt like he was looking at the ball. Shit happens on a football pitch. You know, you, you've got players who you think you know go out to intentionally hurt people. And then you've got people like Nathan Thompson, who's not that type of player. He's mm -hmm. just, he, he, he can make the odd mistake like that for red cards, and he's done it through his career. But he'd be good at more than anyone. Don't forget, he's got Portsmouth history. And, you know, he's an experienced player, and that's Stevenage team. Now they're going to lose him for a few games. So that would be a big loss. And then into League Two. Um, so it's been a curious year for Matty Etherington. Poor Matty, um, yeah. Yeah, so he was let go by Colchester uh, yesterday, I think. And it's been a strange one, hasn't he? He was with Crawley, and then they wouldn't release him, but he'd already signed as manager. Yeah, he'd done well, so he'd done well as a caretaker. Then he got yeah. taken down as a caretaker. Then he finally got put in as manager. I think they've lost eight and nine. They've had an horrific run of results. Um, you know, it's a bit of an odd one, Colchester, because I like Robbie, the owner. And mm. they used their academy which should, you know, you, you want them to do well. You want teams who go and push their academy players to do well. But every season, they seem to be up and down, regards struggle, fire a manager, then they yeah. stay up, you, you, you know, which surprises me because the setup is incredible. Great stadium, unbelievable training ground, phenomenal academy, you know, a club that I'm just like, I'm not sure why it hasn't worked for them yet, but I do know Robbie is a, is a good owner. He's an honest owner, probably getting a bit of grief from their fans. But he's one of the guys I like. Yeah, it's, they always seem to be there and thereabouts, but manage to survive in the end. And you correct. hope that it just doesn't catch up with them eventually. Yeah, correct. Uh, there was a big, um, in terms of goals, game at Grimsby. Grimsby won Walsall 6. Jesus I'm Christ. I'm not quite sure where that came from. But Walsall Grimsby went 1-0 up. Yeah. Grimsby went 1-0 up. I watched, yep. the, I watched the highlights. Yeah, uh -huh. my God. Walsall are flying. I know they've been on a tear. They're... 36 points, three points off the playoffs now, and they oh, were down play. the only a few weeks ago. Yeah, I think they've got some American owners as well. I think um, Jillian and them have had a couple of good wins, bounce back wins. Um, again, like I said to you, it's 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 a fascinating league, league too. You know, it's it's there's so many teams. Like, don't discount Tranmere, even though everyone's talking about oh, the climate yeah. to safety. 
Like, don't discount him because Nigel Atkins, he's that kind of manager. I mean, there's six he's, points he's, off the playoffs now. He's a momentum maker. Yeah. You know, Nigel's one of them happy chappies. He's, you know, full of positivity. Everything will be positive. People, they will enjoy playing for Nigel. I, I always thought when he went upstairs, it was far too early in his career mm -hmm. to do that. You know, he's one of the better ones. So, Jesus, I mean, it's it's really interesting. I mean, Stockport, fair play. But the biggest result for me was Mansfield got to Stockport and win it. Yeah. I mean, I'll give it this. You know, the owners of Mansfield, the kick in the bollocks they've had in the playoffs, Carolina John, uh, Radford, mm -hmm. um, they deserve promotion. Year after year after year. If, if there's a couple of owners who you want to get a promotion, it's them. I mean, they've, they've had their nuts, like, cracked multiple times, just falling out of playoffs, losing in playoffs, you know, those kind of things. The job Nigel's done there, they knocked us out of the League Cup. Very difficult team to play against. I think they've lost once in four or five months. Um, don't, they, they'll win the title now. They could. I still think Wrexham will win, but don't mm -hmm. discount Mansfield. Well, Mansfield have got two in hand over Stockport now and only two points behind them. They do. But, you know, to be fair to both the owners, but also Nigel Clough, I mean, they all stuck around. I, I think yep. that there's been plenty yep. of times where they could have said, you know what, we've tried this enough times, we've got yep. close, but not close enough. It's time to go in a different direction. And they're yeah, kind of no, 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 no. Nigel's a good manager. He knows what he's doing. We've got a promotion bonus on Pimmy going up. So mm -hmm. happy days. We finally get some dough out of him being there. Um, so, but yeah, I mean... You can't discount Wrexham. I mean, Wrexham have like kind of gone along, gone along, gone along. And you look at the table and you go, shit, they're only a few points off the top. Yeah, two points now. Yeah, and you know them with the crowds, the second half of the season, that momentum of promotion last year. They are inevitable. Wrexham are inevitable. I said to my missus a year ago, I was like, they'll be in the championship yeah. in like three, four years. And she was like, what? And I'm saying, promise you, yeah. they will be in the championship. It is inevitable what's happening there. So, yeah, you know, they will win League Two, in my opinion. Stockport will fight to nail. Mansfield will fight to nail. But you just think Wrexham, if they want to, will press the button in January, sign two or three players. Yeah. Gosh, off they go. I imagine that they, they can outspend everybody. Uh, I'm sure they're not going to be shy in doing so. Sure. Um, so That's their prerogative. To, That's their prerogative. Uh, That's what their uh, owners want. So, yeah. you know, and they'll be a force in League One next year. So, yeah. you, you know, that is that is what it is. Phil Parkinson is what he is, you know, and, and the way he goes about it and the style and everything else, that's just them. So, yeah, don't discount Wrexham because they are, like I just said, they're inevitable. You know, it is what it is. All right. So um, let's um... – in fact, I've got National League here. We haven't talked about National League for a little while. I think that's I, I think some Chester, stats Chesterfield, are they yeah. promoted already? Are they, are they, I, think, are they already? <laughs> I think they got more points than Wrexham had at this stage. Uh, last season but Bromley uh, what's interesting is they have they've got 62 points from 25 but Bromley in second place are only seven points behind so it's not like it's a complete blowout yet fair play to Bromley you know apparently a great setup great uh, facilities you know um be amazing to see them get into the league mm -hmm. um you know I personally want Barna to go up because obviously yeah. Tony and what we've done yeah. with Barna but Chesterfield are going up. They're they're going to be Paul Cook's unbelievable. The job he's doing there, so fair play to him. And uh, you know the disappointment of losing last year, you know in the playoffs and whatever else. But again, if it plays out like that, like it's a Notts County and Wrexham with them two, that'll be really interesting. South End have got a new owner, so that's good news for them. Mm -hmm. With all the crap they've been through, um, anything else in non-league to talk about? I think I don't have it in front of me, but I think I saw that Scunthorpe had gone top of National League North, so they're starting. Jimmy to... Dean. Local yep. Peter Boring, yeah, doing really Built well. I think they again. won nine in a row, and, and they've got their own issues sorted out. Transfer windows now open, Philip. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's you know, business time. It's that time of the season, you know. Baz will be getting his fucking his superhero outfit on, you know. <laughs> so, so how many deals are usually already done and waiting for the transfer window to open to... Uh, oh, to be fair, there'll be a few. I mean, I, I think we're sorting out a left back at the moment who... You know, people are thinking, obviously, you, you know, the boy we had last year, or better, but it's not. So we're sorting out somebody there, a bit of competition for H, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's silly season. So bids are coming in. They're like silly bids. And we're just like, fuck off, you know. Um, you know um, yeah. So, we've so, sorry, I saw an exchange about Charlton and some numbers yeah. been thrown around and about uh, Johnson and Clark Harris. Yeah. And you basically said, you know, You'd rather not take a low bid and then leave for nothing in the summer than just oh, yeah. take something that's oh, you know, I, 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 I'm all right either way. So, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, Charlton want them, their chief executives to be my chief exec. 
So he's dead put in bids. Um, we've turned him down. We've had bids from uh, top six championship club for Harrison Bros. Mm-hmm. Um, turn him down. Um, you know, that's just we've we've had bids for a couple of other players as well. Turn him down. I have no real in- if Clark Harris goes, yep. Ronnie, we spoke about, although there are now bigger clubs. I mean, he's just playing lights out at the moment, you know, so he deserves his move. I will be cheeky and ask for if it's a Premier League club that do end up buying him to just give us five more months if they do mm-hmm. buy him. And that would be prudent business by a Premier League club to buy him and keep him with us. So, you know, we don't want to, I don't want to sell any of the front four. Um, again, we've had phone calls, but it would be if anything happened like that and it was outrageous money. We want them back. We don't want to like upset the apple cart with what mm-hmm. we're doing in certain areas of the pitch. Um, you know, there's a time and a place. Ideally, it would be Jono, Ronnie, Ronnie back. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, it's what it is. We're used to this. The players can't get distracted by it. They all know, you know, we always, you know, keep it honest with our players when people have approached mm-hmm. or people have come in. We talk to their agents, we talk to the players. They're all very level headed. They're a great group. They want to be together. You know, and, and again, it would take something ridiculous for outside of the ones I've spoken about for anything to happen. So it's great. It's brilliant. That's just the way it is. And that's always going to be like that at Peterborough. If anything, we'll probably dive in and buy a couple for the 21s. Mm-hmm. They'll be ready for us in the summer. So we do a bit of business. Ideally, you get an FA Cup run and you go, fuck it. We ain't selling anybody. Yeah. You know, you make enough money to cover your deficit. You know, we, like every other club, have a deficit from January to the summer, yep. you know. And you do, you have a miracle, Bradford like running the FA Cup, mm-hmm. bring a couple of million in and go. Uh, you know what? Summer times when we do the business, not now. So, but again, you know, football doesn't work in ideal circles and ideal scenarios. So we'll see. But I'm very relaxed about it. The Clark Harris thing. Look, Charlton are, are they're not a million miles away. Yeah. I'm not saying three fifty or four hundred, but yeah. you know, we we've told them um, in a polite way, and if they. If they reach the number, they'll have permission to speak to him, and then mm-hmm. he can go from there. So we'll see. Yeah. All right, I just not, one... By the way, it's not just Charlton, right? So you, you, you know, there are yes, people have talked about Fleetwood and whatever else, but there's two other League One clubs. There's a club in League Two. There mm-hmm. are other people, and I get everyone goes, yeah, but he's had a contract in six months, and he can leave, and he can talk to anyone. But if you want to win a promotion, if you want to solidify, if you want to. If you want to wait in the summer and be in an auction with 100 other clubs trying to sign a free signing, wait till then. Yeah. You want to save yourself some time, issues, money, go and do a deal now. That's what I would always say. So, you know, he's been magnificent for us, you know, as a player. Um, and, you know, if he, can, if he can go and earn a few quid now with the right move in January, so be it. Do you think he would drop to League Two if it was the right move? Right, I think... Right I, I think it was the right club that has aspirations to go up and they paid him the right money. Yes, all day long, all day long, all day long. If it's good for him and his family, yes. Is there a stigma amongst players about dropping down? I don't. I think if you're 21 and you're like fucking, you know, doing the business, you're expecting to go upwards. I think when you're, you know, and to be fair to him as a target man, he's coming to the prime of his career. I still say he could play in, he could play in the championship comfortably. I do. The physicality in the championship, whenever else, in a semi decent team, I think he'd score 15, 20 goals in the championship. Mm-hmm. You know, so who knows? Maybe one of those who need goals in their team will sign him. So we have one question before we wrap uh, today. Sure. The question came in from Neil on email, and it was around uh, the conversation or building on the conversation we had in the last part about Sir Alex. He said, With Sir Alex having watched a number of games, has he ever spoken to the players as a group? Uh, I know Darren wants to be his own man, but it would be great experience for the younger players to hear from one of the greatest managers of all time. I think you'd have to ask the manager. I think the gaffer occasionally has brought him into training just to mm-hmm. watch and meet the players. You know, so I don't think he's ever gone into the dressing room. I don't think yeah. he's ever whatever else. I just think he's been with the, the gaffer, you know, brings his dogs into training. So you bring yeah. the, you know, the gaffer in, you know, it's mm-hmm. like a home for him. You know what I mean? So bring his kids in, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's like with a gaffer. You know, we have that relationship where it's his club. You know, mm-hmm. you do, you do what you need to do. I was in his office last week and um, I was sat next to his two dogs or we were having conversations, you know what I mean? But that's his home. That's where he yeah. works. Yeah. I want, I want him to spend as much time at the training ground as possible. Yeah. So that means he has to bring everyone in his household to the training mm-hmm. grounds because I get more out of them there with the players. Fucking so be it. Yeah. He can do what he wants. So, you know, yeah. So I think he, he, Sir Alex has been at our training grounds, but I don't think he specifically spoke to the players. 
You know what I mean? But um, listen, if the manager wanted to, I'm sure he would do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think he just enjoys watching us. Do you know what I mean? He's right. like fucking, you know. I'm fucking, sure it's inspiring for the players just to, you know, yeah, have oh, his presence. Oh, oh, but, but you know what? They've got one of the greatest managers in the League One that's ever been. So, you, you know, and, and fair play to all the staff from Tongi to Scarfy to our goalie coach to sports science to chats to the job everybody has done over Christmas with about fuck all time off. They've put a shift in away from their families. I think they've got three days off at the moment. I mean, they've been, you know, I, I couldn't speak any more highly about what everyone's doing from an effort point of view, you know? So uh, I so want them all to succeed because they deserve it for what they're putting in work wise, you know? So let's see. I, I have a, a, one last question about time off. So I think there's a, a you know, a, a fan might look and say, well, they've got to be in training, working hard, no days off, all that kind of thing. Like if players take days off, Sure. Does it? Is there a catch-up period around fitness, or are they all, you know, they're they're trained professionals who, you know, I think, are working yeah, it's, three it's days a good a question. Year? I think early in the season, it's dangerous giving a young group too much time off yeah. because they they lose the the sync. They're in sync. They lose a bit of that. I think when you come out of December, like we have, where you play X amount of games, and then you play mm-hmm. all these games. Like I think we play four games in nine days. You play all these games close together, and when you're a high intensity team like us, it now's the time where you can give them a few days off. You know, but as a young group, they'll be back at it and buzzing again after the three days. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, I think the manager has to have, I think he put that out there as a carrot to them that they go and beat Derby. They were getting a few days off, yeah. you know, and, and those things can work. Sometimes too much time off is not a good thing. Mm-hmm. So during an international break, we found coming out of the international break, we weren't at our best because we just weren't as sharp. And the way we play, you need to be sharp. So, you know, there's like a fine line. And, you know, look, at the end of the day, they're not down in mind. But they have put some hard yards in over yeah. Christmas. And I think it's more about not necessarily the hard work, the fact that Christmas Day they came in. They wore the Santa outfits, they came in, they yeah. Christmas morning, they worked. I think they're away from their families. At a time of year, we're all with our families yeah. 24-7. So I think you have to pay respect to that, you know, uh, sacrifice that they've given and then give them that little, you know, ideally if we had an international break and um, say we were in the champ, I'd have probably taken them to Dubai for five days mm-hmm. for training camp. I would give them a couple of days at home and then taking them for five days just to refresh and recharge. But unfortunately, in League One, you don't get that kind of, you've got the FA Cup, you've got, you know, time and whatever else. So, you know, I'm sure they're all going to have a good few days and then they're they're back in Friday with Leeds on Sunday. So, yeah. Now, when the players take time off, does the management team ever get any time off? Well, I told them to. I said to the manager yesterday, he he was texting me this morning, and I actually said in my text, fuck off, and go and spend time with your missus. It was her (laughs) birthday yesterday. So I just said, look, leave what we're trying to work on to me. You go and get a few days with your missus, you know, because it was her birthday yesterday. And then, um, you know, and the rest of the staff, I said to them last night, I hope they're all fucked off home for a few days. And he said, yeah, they have. And I said, great. So we've got academy staff that can fill in and do the physio work and the rehab work and do whatever else. So they, they need that time. And, you know, it's it's Phil, it's been full on. It's been mentally exhausting. When you play high tempo and the way we play and everything, it's fucking full on. So, and by the way, our pitchers could do with a rest as well training ground and yeah. the fucking stadium you know what I mean so it is what it is alright well let's call it a wrap there um, let's call it a wrap uh, good luck against the Leeds this weekend thank you my man thank you my man so um, we'll be uh, reconnecting again next week I am sure um, let's see well based on your travel plans I know you said you got some travel plans in the next week or two so yeah we will, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find some time together yeah. and I think a good title for the uh, episode should be well let me see um it's got to be something at the TV game, hasn't it? You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's got to be something about, you know, uh, shining for the cameras stuff. or something. Yeah, like that. Co- correct. Exactly. Yeah. Shining for the cameras. You know what I mean? And then after that, a normal day for this posh side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. The first of many. Uh, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Long may it continue. So All right, my man. Send the questions in as always. Email contact at hardtruthfootball.com or just to all the social media channels and we will uh, add them to uh, our run of show. So until we uh, speak to you all again, take care, everybody, and uh, talk soon. Ciao. Thank you.